We have discussed the relationship between bees and flowers in a previous video about pollination, but the relationship between bumblebees and flowers is far more complex than just pollination. So how does static electricity link to this? Well, everything around us is made of atoms, including bumblebees and flowers. Atoms are really, really small and can only be seen by the most powerful microscopes. To give you an idea of just how small atoms are, there are seven billion, billion, billion atoms um, that make up the human body. So this is what seven billion, billion, billion looks like. So yeah, atoms are really small. But surprisingly, atoms are made up of even smaller particles called subatomic particles. There is a central nucleus that contains neutrons, which have a neutral electrical charge, and protons, which have a positive electrical charge. Electrons are the third particle that make up an atom, and they are negatively charged and spin around the nucleus. Normally, the positive and negative charges within an object balance each other out, so most objects have no electrical charge. Now, if we thought that atoms were small, electrons are even smaller. In fact, they, their weight is almost insignificant. And this means rubbing or friction can remove electrons from an object and transfer them to another object. And that means the original object um, has more protons than electrons and it leaves it with a positive electrical charge. Now, when an object has an electric charge, an electric field is created around it. The bigger the charge, the bigger the field. Normally, if I want to exert a force on something, I would have to touch it. But electric fields mean that two objects don't have to touch for a force to act between them. If two objects have the same electrical charge, both positive or negative, then the two objects will repel one another or push each other away. If one object has a negative charge and one has a positive charge, the two objects will be attracted to one another or pulled towards one another. Okay, it's been a while since we've seen a bumblebee, so let's bring one in. As a bumblebee flies through the air, it beats its wings at around 200 times every single second. This extremely rapid movement means that particles in the air frequently collide with the bumblebee with enough friction to strip electrons from the bumblebee. As negatively charged, electrons are stripped from the bumblebee, it is left with a positive charge. The surface of the earth, and therefore the flowers attached to it and the pollen within them, are negatively charged. As a positively charged bumblebee approaches a negatively charged flower, their electric fields overlap and there's a force of attraction between them. This force causes the negatively charged pollen grains that are not anchored to the flower to leap onto the bumblebee and stick to the bumblebee's hairs without the bumblebee ever needing to touch the flower. I'm sure you'd agree this force is fantastic for helping bumblebees to collect pollen. But amazingly, this force of attraction could also help bumblebees select which flowers to visit. As a positively charged bumblebee lands on a negatively charged flower, electrons move from the flower into the bumblebee to create a balance. When the bumblebee flies away, the flower is left with fewer electrons and a weaker negative charge. When another bumblebee approaches the same flower, that flower will exert a weaker electric field and therefore a weaker force of attraction to that bumblebee. And this will tell the bumblebee that this flower has been recently visited by another bumblebee and its resources of pollen and nectar might be low. So the bumblebee can fly onto the next flower without wasting any energy. Amazing. If you want to find out more about the amazing world of bumblebees, there are loads of resources for a whole range of age groups and lots of other information too on our website at bumblebeeconservation.org. You can also follow us on social media to keep up with all the latest bumblebee news.